the students. So we're going to be looking on, on the second topic on the logics and that's implication and double implication. So I expect that you would have gone through the assignment, well, the lesson, and you've read what implications are, what double implications are, and so you're at the activity session. Just to recap, let me just scroll up a bit. Just to recap, the implication All right, so basically implications are, are if-then statements, right? That's another type of compound preposition. It's comprised the first part, the first variable is considered the premise, and the second variable is considered the conclusion, or the first section in front of the arrow is called the premise, and the second section outside or after the arrow is called a conclusion and then we are given some statements that means that indicate an implication so if you see an if then statement or a therefore you know that it is an implication for the double implication oh by the way the truth table for implication is this in other words if you have the premise true and the conclusion for false that is if the phrase before the arrow is true and the phrase after the arrow is false, it is false. Otherwise, it's true all around. Here we have the double implication. It's the if and only if statement, right? It also has a premise and a conclusion. The first or the statement that is immediately before the arrow or what you would call behind to the left of the arrow let me use it that way to the left of the arrow is called the premise and the statement to the right of the arrowhead is called the conclusion this is the truth table for a double implication once there is a true false true false the double implication would be false right so in order for the double implication to be true both of them would have to be true in other words if i promise to do something you will see the result just as the original problem if i win the lotto no you will get one million dollars if and only if i win the lotto if I win the lotto, you'll get the $1 million, right? If I don't win the lotto, you won't get the $1 million. It can be a situation where if I win the lotto, I still don't give it the, the, the $1 million. That's for second row. That means that um, my promise is not true. I did not hold to my promise. Or if I don't win the lotto, I, um, if I don't, Sorry, let me get that my thoughts. So, if and only if. Right? So, I will give you $1 million if and only if I win the lotto. I don't give it $1 million if I win the lotto. It just does not hold true. All right? So, let's go into doing some questions now. Right? Now, in this first activity, we've identified all three variables, P, Q, and R. P says X is an integer, Q, X is even, R, X is a multiple of three. And we're asked to write in symbolic form, if X is an integer and multiple of three, then X is even. So here we're working with three variables, right? So that's what we're going to be doing for the first question. Let's look on it. If x is an integer and multiple of 3. So let's break it down. Let's, let's take it simply first. We, we see here that an and connector is being used. Right? And you might see a change in your screen. I just opened up uh, my... I just opened up my comment section so that I can edit. So we see an if statement here 
and we see an and, so you know that we're going to be using if something, then something. What are we going to be using? Is it the double implication or just the simple implication? If, then, so we know that it's going to be just the regular implication, so the one with the single arrowhead. All right, so remember the phrase that comes after the arrowhead or to the right of the arrowhead is the conclusion. So we can go ahead and write the conclusion. Then x is even. Which variable represents x is even again? Q. Now let's just look. I wrote that one first because that's the easiest part to look at. That's the easiest part to do, right? Let's look on the left hand side now. Here we see a compound statement on the left hand side. So the premise will be a compound statement. So let me see if I can find another color to use. All right. So we have two statements here to the left. If x is an integer, and a multiple of three. Wow. So how are we going to write that? Do you remember the and connector? So we know that if something is going to be and. So we know that there's going to be an and there. What else? If P is a, P, X is an integer, so we did the if and part. That's the double implication. So let's look on the blue part. X and multiple of three. All right. So what are we going to put in front of and behind the and connector? If X is an integer, X is an integer would be denoted by P. X is a multiple of three that will be denoted by R. And since we have a compound statement here, we'll just put it in brackets. And that's it. That's how we write in symbolic form. So if, if X is an integer and a multiple of three, right? then x is even. And that's all there is to it for part A. Part B. Construct a truth table to show this compound statement. So, since we're working with, since we're working with three variables, how many rows are we going to have again? How many rows of truth values? If you said eight, you are indeed correct. All right, so let me see how quickly I can draw this table. So the first row will have the first variable. So you should be going ahead of me now to write in um, your variables. All right, so that's P, Q, R. And then we're going to build all the things that are necessary for the table, all right? All right, so I'll stop right there. All right, awesome. All right, so the first row would have, the first column would have P, second column Q, third column R. So right here, we can close our eyes and write in the truth values, but let's do that last. What else do we need? Let's break down the compound statement part by part. So we have P, we have Q, we have R. What else do we need to build this compound statement? Can we just go ahead and write in P and R implies Q? Can we just go ahead and do that? If I did that, P and R implies Q. What would we be looking at for to, to, to compare P and R with Q? 
we really wouldn't have anything. So we need to create another column for P and R alone, right? So let's do that. P and R. Instead of trying to do it in your head, write a P and R. And then afterwards, now you, you, you compare the, the results P and R with the Q when we're writing the compound statement, the implication statement. All right, so let me just scroll down a bit. So now we can write in our truth values real quick. All right, let's write them in. Lock your eye, right? Once you're working with three variables, we're going to use this format first row, four truths, four false. All the statements are the same. Right? Lock your eye and write it. For the second column, true, true, false, false, and we continue with the pattern. True, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. For those of you who want to sit down and figure it out and ensure that no row uh, matches without using this pattern, it's up to you, but I'm guaranteeing you that that will take so much longer. All right, for the third row, alternate true, false, true, false. So if you notice, all the columns start with true, and they have a different pattern. All right. So, that is for that row down here. I should have written that properly. P and R, the AND connector. Remember, the AND connector is true only when both of them are true, right? Okay, this true was not written properly, right? So we're comparing. What are the two rows that we're com the two columns that we're comparing here? Let's look on it. We're comparing columns three. Sorry, two and three. All right, so this is column one here, column two, column three, column four, and the last is column five. So we're comparing columns two and three. All right, so let's go. P and R. Only true if both columns have truth values both rows in the column have truth values so let's look at it now p and r columns what did i say earlier if i say columns two and three please forgive me p and r columns one and three p and r so true true gives you true that's p and r true false That would give me false. True, true. That would give me true. Oh, this false is not written properly. All right, true, false, false. And so we can continue writing. When you are writing yours, guys, make sure that yours is neater than mine. Much, much neater, right? Ensure that every row is aligned. Not like mine where the rows are not straight, right? So you can use your ruler and draw in the lines if you wish, or use the grid lines on your page to ensure that everything is aligned. All right, so now we can compare columns four and two. No, it, it matters which column you look on first. Remember, the premise is what you look on first. The premise is the first statement, the statement to the left of the arrow. So in this case, the premise is column number four, P and R. So we're going to look on the truth values for P and R, and then we're going to look on the values for Q. So we're looking on the truth values for columns four and two. So Remember what the implication says? It is only true when what? Come on, let's look back on it, guys. Let's look back on it. Very good. 
It is only false when the first statement or the premise is true and the second one false. That's the only time the double, not the double, the simple implication is false. So let's get back. So, if the first is true, if the first statement is true, and the second one is false, then you get false. Otherwise, it's true all around. So for the first row here, comparing columns 4 and 2, what would we have? True. Awesome. False, true, that would give us true. Okay, my pen is misbehaving. All right. True, false, gives you false. False, false, gives you false. False, true, gives you true. Same thing for the next row is the same thing. False, false, give you true. False, false, gives you true. And that's how we construct that truth table. Now we're already 16 minutes in and I wanted to make this video as short as possible. But let's see how quickly we can com complete questions two and three. So here we are to denote the statement. This course is easy and teacher is kind by the variables E and K. And then we're going to express each of these sentences symbolically. And we're going to represent their truth tables in their truth values in a single table. So one table will have all these all four. All right. So the course is easy. Let me write it here. Course is easy, is represented by E, and the teacher is kind by K. The course is easy if and only if the teacher is kind. Are we going to use double implication or, 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 or just the simple implication? Remember the phrase that suggests double implication if and only if. So we know that we're going to have one with a two-headed arrow. So the course is easy is the premise if and only if the teacher is kind. That's it. The if the course is easy, then the teacher is kind. So that's an if-then statement. You can use this arrow with a single line or you can use this one it means the same thing so the if if the course is easy then the teacher is kind the course is not easy therefore the teacher is not kind remember the word therefore would also suggest a simple implication i had mentioned it before so we know that it's going to be this arrow here the course is not easy. How do we represent not or negation again? We use our little curl or our tilde. So not E implies the teacher is not kind. So it will be not K. The teacher is not kind. Therefore, the course is not easy. So you would think that it means the same thing as the original. No, the variables are switched. Can write our double, um, not double, or a simple implication here. The teacher is not kind, so that's not K. Implies the course is not easy. Do you think that we'll be getting the same truth value for D as we did for C? Let's check it out. All right, so we're going to have a, a very long truth table here. How many variables are we working with? Just two. So how many rows of values are we going to have? Just two. Awesome. All right. So let me see if I can copy this thing now. All right. So I'm moving a little bit slow. So you should go ahead, right, and drop your table. And this is the result for the question, all right? So for, we've, since we're using, as I said before, since we're using two variables, we're going to have four rows of data, right? We wrote out the values for E, K, not E, not K, because of course we have not E and not K in or compound statements, and so we have to create a separate table for them, as I had mentioned previously and in previous lessons. Uh, so um, we 
derive the compound statements not e im, if and on sorry e if and only if k e if e then k that's column states uh not e if not e then not k and if not k then not e all right and we ask the question would c and d part c and d that is column seven and eight would they have the same truth values and here we can see no they would not have the same truth values let's look at not e implies not k not e is a premise in the first one and not k is a conclusion the only time the implication the simple implication is false is if the first statement is or what we call the premise if that is true but the conclusion is false all right and the only time that happens is row c if you look at row c which is here we have not e being true and not k false so the conclusion will be false let's compare that with column eight not k implies not e here not k is the premise or the first statement so we're going to look at column four not k first the first truth value if the if the first true value is true and the second false it's false overall all right and row c suggests that okay not c row b what's happening tonight all right all right but it's true all around finally construct a truth table for the the statements p if and only if q or r this is what the truth table is going to look like students right this is what your truth table will look like let's take a closer look at row at column four here if and only if let us remember what if and only if what the truth values are if both of if both the premise and the conclusion are true or false the truth value will be true it is false otherwise all right and that's what we see here p and q p if and only if q rows a b f and h those are true otherwise it is false right and we've already gone into breaking down the statement the compound statement into simpler statements in order for us to um find the truth values of the the, the the overall compound statement so the overall compound statement is p if and only if q or r we're going to break it down into its constituent parts first we're going to identify all three variables in that compound statement and that's what we did we identified p q r then we look what else um what's the other what's the next step or what's the next phrase or the next compound statement right p implies q p if and only if sorry q right and then we build on that to make a bigger statement now which is p if and only if q or r now in column five we're using both the double implication and the or all right but we have the double implication in column four already so we're just comparing columns column four with column three and since we're using the or connector remember the or connector the only time it is false if you if you have false in both columns meaning if you have false as the premise and conclusion or false for the two simple propositions not, pre not premise and conclusion Pause for the two prepositions, P, so the one in row four and the one in row three. If both the truth values are false, then automatically 
you will get a false. It is true otherwise. And that is why for row D, we have a false implied um, false and a false. So here we would have the result false. All right, and that's it for implication and double implication students. That's all there is to it. All right, thank you so much for watching and take care.